Thank you ever so much. Well, I, I, this is a terrible thing to do because you never know you're going to say the right thing, particularly when you're terribly deaf as I am. But welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks again to producer Kevin Francis and, of course, to Fiona Armstrong, to the two men behind the original Hammer Horror series, uh, Sir James Carreras and Tony Hines. Now, Peter, you've brought audiences to the edge of their seats in 91 films, like this worldwide hit in which you played Ryder Haggard's explorer, Major Holly, seeking a mysterious jungle ruler in She. <laughs> What are you doing? She saved my life and has done you no harm. Why should you want to kill her? I'll be rid of her. If you really believe he is Calypso's reborn, then remember, your jealousy and cruelty robbed you of his love once before. Are you prepared to take that risk again? No, Holly, I'm not prepared to take that risk. That is why she must die. And... She is here, that ageless actress, uh, Ursula uh, Andress. Well, Peter, you may be deaf, but you're all right in every other yeah. department, I see. <laughs> no. Oh, Ursula, will you remind us of how you were described in that movie? She who must be obeyed. Yes, darling, and you still are. What would you like me to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't. No, he didn't. Like he didn't with obey me. you in that no, film. No, he did not. He didn't want me to kill the girl. No. Because but, I was uh, so jealous of her. <laughs> but anyhow, you're a, you're marvelous. It was you're a lovely picture to make, wasn't it, darling? And yes. you're. A fantastic human being and a true English gentleman. Thank you, my darling. Thank, thank you, Ursula. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, audiences of all ages have long enjoyed your talent in thrilling films like these. The final checkout is completed. All systems are operational. What course shall we set? Perhaps she would respond to an alternative form of persuasion. What do you mean? I think it is time we demonstrated the full power of this station. Set your course for all of that. David? Oh! Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, dear fellow. This place is apt to make one a little jumpy. Ah! Dear! Come, and I kill her! Peter Cushing, this is your life. You were born at Kenley in Surrey on May the 26th, 1913, where your father, George, was a chartered ah, surveyor. There you are with him, your mother, Nellie, yeah. and your late brother, David. Yeah. 
You used to entertain the family with the Punch and Judy set. <laughs> there is the young puppeteer. <laughs> but your father was against your early acting ambitions, so you started your working life in the surveyor's department at the town hall. Yes. But you got parts in amateur productions, you won over your father, and went professional at Worthing Rep. Yes. 1938 sees you with Harry Hansen's court players in Nottingham. You board the train at Euston, just uh. as a rather morose-looking young man is settling into a corner seat. Suddenly the door burst open and you beamed, mind if I join you? Your travelling companion of 52 years ago, Peter Gray. <laughs> now, Peter, you oh, had a... Marvellous boy. <laughs> you had a reason for feeling a bit low that day, didn't you? Yes, I was feeling very sorry for myself. I'd just been jilted. And when this genial ball of muscle bounced in with his, mind if I join you? <laughs> I felt like saying, of course I mind, fathead, can't you see? I want to be alone. <laughs> but then, of course, when we discovered that we were both bound for the same rep season, the breeze of bonhomie blew into a positive gale of goodwill <laughs> and we ended up in the same digs. Absolutely, yes. And dear <laughs> the mother, beginning mm, yes. of a lifelong friendship. Happy day. Thank you. Peter oh, yeah, thank you. Well, Peter, the Nottingham version of Hollywood isn't good enough for you. You want to go to the real Hollywood. Your father offered to foot the bill. I think the <laughs> offer had a bit of a ting at the sting in the tail, didn't it? <laughs> yes, uh, he bought me a ticket. <clears throat> and I think I wasn't, uh, until I was on board the boat, that I saw it was a one-way. Yes. <laughs> well, it shows I he just, had confidence in uh, you. Yes, I all. even thought I'd get on or that I could swim home. <laughs> well, you arrive in California on February the 10th, 1939, in perfect London weather. It's raining buckets. Yeah. And you take shelter at the YMCA. But those rain clouds turned out to have a silver lining. $75 a week's worth when you land a part in The Man in the Iron Mask, starring Louis Hayward. Yes. There you are with the man himself. Yes. And yes, next, uh, thanks to your accent, you land a small part in a chump at Oxford yeah. with your great favourites, <laughs> Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> yes. More, well, nine times you went back on that show and never squeezed a penny out of the lads. All right, all right. Never let it be said that I don't pay my debts. Peter, this could be your lucky day. It's Ernie Wise. Oh, <laughs> Can you see the day? No, I can see yours. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ernie, are you going to do the right thing? I think I should do the right thing. Oh. I'll leave. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Peter, you've been spreading all these nasty rumours about us not paying you on the show. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Sounds like Eric. I wanna, <laughs> well, I want to settle this once and for all. It was it was twenty pounds, wasn't it? Twenty uh, pounds for the uh, show, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but, but I did seven. Uh, seven twenties is um, uh, 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 about uh, about hundred and seventy, uh, including VAT, wasn't it? Well, I've no, got, no. look, I've got the twenty pounds ah. here. And I think I ought to pay you. Oh, all this right, is yes. an historic moment. You're an honourable man, yes. Ernie. All right. You haven't got change for twenty pounds, have you? Uh, no, Ernie. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I, I had to come here in a taxi and everything, and yes. I had to rent this suit and everything. So, really, that's you, what. No, I'll, I'll uh, spend this twenty pounds and I'll uh, keep no, this. Thank you very much. Do not borrow my bike. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> now, funds were also low, Peter, when you returned from America during the early part of the war. Unfit for the services, you joined the wartime entertainment group, ENSA. Mm -hmm. And on tour, you met and married the love of your life, uh, the former Cochrane young lady, Helen Beck. Mm -hmm. She was a great encouragement to you in all you did, and you were idyllically happy. Sadly, Helen died in 1971. Mm -hmm. Here you are, hand-painting silk scarves for her, a talent that you still have, as we see here, and more of your paintings including your work in watercolours. 1951 sees your debut on the small screen, your great success in plays and in the serialised Pride and Prejudice. Your award-winning performance comes in the television version of George Orwell's 1984. Rats were caught in the sewers a week ago. Now they're starting. Julia! 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 Not me! Julia! I don't care what you do to her! 
Well, the television version of the Winslow Boy brings another memorable Cushing uh, performance. It's certainly an occasion I personally will never forget. And to tell us more, no. that fine actress, Gwen Watford. Yeah. Darling Gordon, without the other yes, player. Yes, yes, How yes, lovely. Yes. Gwen, tell uh, us what was so memorable about that 1958 production. Because it gave me my start mm -hmm. and led on to a television award. What happened was that the leading actress who was cast opposite Peter to play Catherine Winslow mm -hmm. was taken ill just before rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And as luck would have it, Peter had seen me in the time in the Conways just three or four days beforehand mm -hmm. and made a note of my name. And when the director asked him who he wanted to replace this actress, mm -hmm. he said, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. Right. And I'm so grateful, Peter, to have this chance, after 34 years later, to say how very grateful I am and that I've never forgotten. Bless your heart. Thank, Thank you very much. much. In 1957, you played the title role in The Curse of Frankenstein. Ah, that yes, film was the start of a friendship with a fellow actor which spans 27 <laughs> films. Here is your first meeting. <laughs> Next, the party really gets his teeth into Dracula. Well, he has to be in New York tonight, not visiting his dentist, but filming. It's your good friend, Christopher Lee. You know, you've always been, as I've told you many times, a delight and a despair to me in terms of us acting together. A delight because it's wonderful to work with such a great professional so dedicated to his work and to his craft, and a despair, because you are the only actor who can read the times, drink his whiskey and soda, light his pipe, and deliver his dialogue, all at the same time. <laughs> can I wish you, my dear fellow, the very happiest of evenings from my heart. God bless you. Step out. Thank you, Christopher Lee. Well, your continuing performances in the Hammer horror films attract some talented co-stars, as we see here in the satanic rites of Dracula. Oh, Professor Julian Keeley. You know him? I've met him. He's been here once or twice. But you know him, Grandfather. You know him very well. Is that true, sir? Yes, I know him. What is it you're working on? But you're not your ill tongue, we don't do Julian! <laughs> help me. Help me, Lord of all. Julian! These notes, they refer to a new strain of Bacillus pestis. Eubonic plague! <laughs> And from the Satanic Rites, they are here, the lovely Freddie Jones.